Hello friends, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. Please take it according to your time zones. Okay, so in this part two of uh, identity management, OID and OM flow and integration, we will see the high level integration steps. Okay, what are the steps required when we go for the integration of complete OID and OM? So let us recap the session one. Uh, in a basic flow, when we say that we have integrated our application with the OAM and OID, what happened exactly is that when a user try to access any application, which is deployed either in, in your internal network or maybe on the internet or, or, or on the public domain, okay, the first request hit your web server. Okay, and this is the location where we deploy or we install the WebGate. So WebGate is a component that is required when we go for the integration of OAM and OID. Okay, so basically when we integrate our OHS with the OAM, then we need a WebKit. So you have WebKit and then you have a WebKit on the same server where you have your OHS or maybe you have some different uh, web servers. Okay, and then from WebKit, the request for it to OAM for authentication and authorization. Okay, so authentication means that authentication of your username and password and authorization means that if you are really authorized to access the application that you are going to use. Okay, and then from OEM, the request forwarded to your OID for the user's authentication because OID is an LDAP or a, uh, or you can say is an identity store which is store all of your username, passwords and your uh, complete profile data. Okay, and then your OEM and OID uh, connect with the backend database. So for OEM, when we install the OEM, we have a lot of uh, schemas that we create, right, for the metadata of OEM, and then that completely store in your database. And then uh, OID is again use your database for storing all of your identities. Okay. So this is the basic flow that we had discussed in our session one. For more information, you can visit to my uh, OID integration session one. Okay. So now when we talk about the setup, okay, then. The first thing that you need is installation and configuration of WebGate at OHS to forward request to OEM. Okay, so now here what I am considering is that you have a web logic where certain applications are running. Okay, and you have a web server is already running there. Okay, so here I am considering that you are using the Oracle OHS server. OHS server. Okay, so you first you need to install your web server. And once your web server is installed, then you have to install WebGate on top of your OHS. Okay. And then because your WebGate intercepts the request from your web server and then it forward to OEM. Although it is an OEM component, but it is a separate software that need to be installed with, along with your OHS. So first part is the installation and configuration of your WebGate in your OHS server. Right. And once that is done, you have to install and configure your OEM and OID. And then your OAM need to integrate with the OID because all of your identities are stored in your uh, OID, right? And OAM is basically work as an SSO single sign-on and as a policy manager, right? For, for authorizations of your applications, okay? So it connect with the backend OID. So you need to install a OAM, you need to install OID. And after that, you have to integrate your OAM with OID. So now when we talk about the software and solution, so what all of the softwares are required, you need the OHS, which is a Oracle web server, and then you need or Oracle WebGate. Fourth, third component is Oracle OEM, and then fourth is your OID LDAP. These are the four softwares you need, okay? And obviously you need the Oracle infrastructure installer as well, all right? Because that your OEM OID is deployed on top of your Oracle infrastructure. Now installation is that, you first you have to install the OHS, then once your OHS is installed, then you have to install your WebKit on the same instance or in the same host where you have installed your OHS, okay? And then you have to install your OEM and then you have to install your OID. So when you are going for the installation and setup, make sure that WebKit must be installed on server where OHS is running, okay? So based on the architecture and topology, you may have the OHS server on the same host where your application are running, or you can say where your application server or WebLogic server is running, Okay, but it could be possible that when you're in a production that you have your OHS is running on a, some different host, right? And then your applications running on different host. So in that case, you have to install WebKit on the server where you have your OHS or you can say the web server is installed. And OID and OM can be installed on same or different server and can be in same or different domain. So OID and OM is altogether a different software, 
right? So they can be installed independently on different machines, or they can be installed on a same machine where you can have a different domain for OID and OAM, or you can have a same domain for OID and OAM. But basically, when we talk about the practical implementation of OID and OAM, we install OAM and OID in separate domains. Okay. Now, the high-level integration steps, okay, now we are very clear about the flow that user, whenever access a website, it goes to OHS web server first, and then from web server, WebGate intercept the request, and then it forward to OAM. From OAM, it forward the request to OID for authentication, right? Now, the first step is you have to integrate your OHS and WebGate with OAM. So there are two major steps. First step is you have to integrate your OHS WebGate with OAM. And then once that part is completed, then you have to go for the second part, which is the OAM and OID configuration. So let us talk about the first step where we have to integrate our OHS WebGate with OAM. Okay, so once your OHS is installed, and on top of that, we have installed your WebGate. Okay, then the, then, then the integration of OHS and WebGate is very simple. You have to go inside a WebGate directory, which I will explain practically in my next session. Okay, so here I'm giving you a basic idea. Okay, <clears throat> just to give you a brief about uh, the executions. Okay, so, so the integration of OHS and WebGate is very simple. You have to just execute two scripts that come with the WebGate. Okay, for the integration of OHS and WebGate. So that is the first part. And second, to integrate your WebGate and OHS with the OEM, for that, you have to go to your OEM admin console and then OEM admin console, you have to create an agent, okay, from the admin console, uh, OEM console, okay. And once you will create a agent in your OEM, it will create some configuration files, okay. You you, you just need to that, take that file and copy it your, in your WebGate configuration directly. So that is the only step that is required for the integration of your OHS WebGate and OEM. So let me reiterate that one. The first one is to integrate your OHS with WebGate. You have to just execute two scripts that come with the WebGate. Okay. And to integrate your OHS and WebGate with OEM, you have to create an agent in your OEM. Okay. And so once you will create the agent, it will create certain configuration files. Okay. And once that configuration files are generated, you have to take those configuration files and you need to copy that in the WebGate configuration file. And the two important files that you must need to be copy from WebGate agent is obxsclient.xml and cwallet.sso. So this is the first part which will complete your OHS WebGate and OEM integration. And when we talk about OEM and OID integration, okay, so for that first, you have to create an admin user for OEM in OID because your OEM is going to connect with the OID. That means OEM is going to use OID as an identity store, right? Because it is going to authenticate all the identities from OID. So for to, to integrate, or you can say to connect your OEM with the OID, first you have to create an admin user in OID, okay? That you can say as an OEM admin user, right? Because that will use for the integration of OEM and OID. Second part is create OID identity store in OEM pointing to your OID LDAP server, which will connect with OID using above created user. So as I said, your OEM will now connect with OID as an identity store. So by default, you are not itself only OEM, by default, all the middleware, Fusion middleware products use their native authentication of WebLogic server. That means native or native LDAP server of WebLogic. Okay, but when we are going to configure OEM with OID, that means we are replacing that default authentication module or LDAP module with the OID. So that means you have to create a new identity store in your OEM. And once you will create your identity store in OEM, that place you have to specify the admin user that you have created in the above steps for the connectivity, right? So once it is done, select above created identity store as your default identity store. So as I said, when we have not configured OEM with OID, it will use a default LDAP store, right? And once we have defined the custom identity store to connect with the OID, then you have you will get an option to replace your default identity LDAP server with the identity store that you have created. In that way, we will replace default one with the identity store that we have created to connect with the OID, right? So that's all. And the last step is create authentication module in OEM and set LDAP in the Dropbox. Now you have integrated your OID, OEM with the OID, so that means at, at last you have an authentication module. Okay, so for authentication module, just you need to do is you need to select the LDAP as a 
as a authentication server okay so that's all from this video and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos thank you